This is Whitley Bay High School. Our school, your school. I like it, and I think you will too. All sorts of things have been going on since quite early. Tennis, badminton, trampolining, things start at about 7.30 every morning. The first thing for everyone is two degree. Come in. Each day in tutorial students do a different type of thing. Once a week during tutor time students get together and discuss the current news issue and they work with different students each time. The topic for this session was the government's proposed changes to the education system. I outlined some of the more controversial proposals to the students to get some feedback on what they thought of them. After expressing their opinions on these, students then worked in groups coming up with their own ideas about what their ideal school would be like if they could change schools for the future. After that, students then fed back their ideas to the rest of the group and it was basically just to give them an opportunity to work with different people in the tutor group and feel confident in expressing their ideas, which hopefully they can take forward to their lessons as well. Right, geography now with Mr Holbrook, although it's not the sort of lesson that you would know. At Willie Bay High School, students are encouraged to learn in a way that best suits them, and it's not just about a teacher standing up and talking to the class, though there is that too. This activity was for Year 9 students in geography, starting to look at the country of Japan. As a starter, I played a video to them, uh, as often happens in lessons. However, students are told that on this occasion there will be no soundtrack and it will be their job to take it in turns to produce the narration. This can work at all sorts of levels. For some students, it might simply be trying to make sense of what is happening on screen and describe this as accurately as they can. For other students, it might be that they have prior knowledge or understanding that they can bring to the lesson and start explaining reasons why that particular thing is happening and they can learn from each other an example of peer teaching. Rather than being passive recipients of the media, they become far more involved and consequently take a lot more in. It's quite different to what students are used to and it therefore makes it far more memorable and personal to them. Students really engage and I don't think I've yet had a class where students haven't, once they've had a go, asked if they can re-watch the footage again with sound so that they can compare their narrative to the actual one. They listen very intently and consequently take in a great deal of information, far more than they otherwise would. Um, it's modern and it's on the coast. I've got maths with Miss Tully now. Well, I say maths, but I mean ICT too. It's in the library with Miss Ellis as well. He's the library manager. Come on. The class filmed in the library was one of 16 lessons booked in to allow all Year 9 maths classes an opportunity to use the library for research. The aim was to introduce students to new maths ICT resources, as well as great mathematicians from history. Students could simultaneously research the mathematician's life and work, and improve their ICT using the school intranet to access websites. It's also been an opportunity for us to remind students that the library is a whole school, cross-curricular resource, providing for all subjects that they study at school. Cord. That is a cord. So you're left with the last one. Circumference. I've got English with Mr Bell. He says they've all got to learn from experience. I'm a bit worried though. He says they've all got to meet up outside. I've been studying the novel Stone Cold with a Year 9 class. The novel's about homelessness, and I found one of the problems is that the students have been really quite unsympathetic towards homeless people, and labelling them things such as tramps and dossers and scroungers and things like that. So I had the idea that if we were to take them outside and sit them on some cold, hard concrete with the backsides flat on the ground for half an hour, hopefully they might start to, if not sympathise, then at least empathise with them. I thought it was quite successful in that students were really starting to empathise with people in that situation and were starting to be very creative with the responses as well. And I thought for the particular class with a lot of unsympathetic boys, it really started to open their minds, so I was happy with that. That's probably the most likely place you'd sleep. Shop doorway, train station, anywhere else you can think of? Right, in the D. Right, you're in the D. It's nearly time for lunch, but in this food technology exam class, the students are preparing and cooking up something really sweet. The class that you're seeing at the moment is a GCSE Year 10 um, class. 
They're in the middle of doing the GCSE practical exams, which is part of the coursework, uh, which equates to 60% of the final grade. And they're all producing something totally different. Um, they're producing work which is in an excellent standard, and they're presented um, in the same manner. They're cooking a range of things, um, including a lot of desserts like Mars Bar uh, Cheesecake, my favourite. The pasta products as well, um, that's mainly what's going on. Lunch is over. It's French now with Mr. Cole. They'll be working in pairs and be speaking both English and French. As this is the time of the year when classes need to prepare for the uh, approaching exams, we tend to spend a fair amount of time looking at past papers. I think it's quite important for our students to do this in a variety of ways. So in this lesson we tried doing it in a kinesthetic way, which involved moving around the classroom, looking at different articles from the past exam. First of all, the, the students were put into pairs and they were given an article to look at. Then they picked out the, the key vocabulary from that article and wrote it onto cards with the English on one side and the French on the other. Then they moved around the class from one, one article to the next, looking at the English words and trying to find the French equivalent in the article. Once they'd done this, they then worked out what the whole thing meant. Overall, I think um, the students seemed to respond quite well to the activity. I think most of them enjoy sharing their knowledge with each other in a structured kind of way and I hope that they left the lesson having broadened their knowledge of the kind of vocabulary and structures that appear in the A2 exam. These vehicles are destined for trips of the ONU posted at Kosovo. Four down, more to go. It's the last lesson of the day now. It's day in biology, well then, and all about helicopters. Plants need to disperse their seeds as far away from the parent plant as possible. This gives them space, light uh, and nutrients and water. So students were asked to come up with a hypothesis of how to design a seed which would be able to move as far from the parent plant as possible. So we're basing it on a sycamore seed which is basically a helicopter shape. Students enjoy the opportunity to think independently and to trial their own ideas, particularly after the constraints of SATs where there's definite right and wrong answers. In activities like this, they can also develop many of the skills that they need for GCSE coursework. School doesn't just come to a halt at 3.30. All sorts of things take place after that, whether it's sport, reading or music. There's a whole range of activities and there's bound to be something for you. I'm exhausted. I've had a full day. I've done lots of interesting things. But I've had fun and I've enjoyed it. And I've learned a lot. And at the end of the day, that's what you go to school for, isn't it? <laughs>